everyone welcome to another video if you're new here hi my name is Rit I'm a mixed media artist in Austria in Europe I usually say watercolor and mixed media artist but I have to admit that I have been neglecting my watercolors lately and yeah I just wanted to do a little catch up and also share some of my kind of first experiences with oil paint I will leave timestamps below and links to everything that I'm mentioning and I just want to say I have been painting for several years I'm self-taught I started actually from scrapbooking about like a decade ago and then soon found mixed media and really fell in love with watercolors and I have been painting predominantly with watercolors for the past years but in recent months I felt uh, that I really wanted to explore other mediums as my main medium. When I paint with watercolors, I hardly ever paint just with watercolors. I love to use pencils and pastels as well. And that kind of brought me also to playing with oil pastels and oil sticks. And that eventually led to using more acrylic paint. And finally, I landed on, I think, my last unconquered medium which was oil paint so I'm guessing like many people I was very ambivalent about oils actually I would say even more negative than ambivalent I didn't really see the appeal I mean obviously when you go to museums a lot of what is hanging there uh, is made with oil paints especially when you're talking about um, you know art that uh, was made before the 20th century it's mostly oil paint uh, they didn't have acrylics then and watercolor was more of like a sketching medium yeah so it seemed like that kind of old world super labor intensive and very complicated and difficult medium to me at least and the whole like long drying time that was that and the solvents those two things were to me like those big you know red <laughs> no no signs and i kind of stayed away uh, from that medium also being self-taught i felt that uh, i was just really intimidated by the medium and i still am and i still think that you know i use it probably in a very very uh, specific way but I'm trying to learn as much as I can so that I can find what works for me. And I do believe in acquiring that knowledge and then saying, okay, I want to use it in this specific way, not because I'm scared of trying something else, but just because that's what works for me. Again, this whole video is made from the perspective of a beginner. And of course, if you have any advice, if you have more experience, I will gladly uh, read it. I'm always very happy to learn and I will also list below the resources that I have found most helpful for me personally and uh, maybe that can help you as well. Let's start with the materials. Uh, the paint itself, I find there are like two major categories. There's the traditional oil paint and then there's the water soluble oil paint. Uh, the water soluble is definitely more appealing to me because of the fact that I can use water to dilute the paint. There are also specific mediums that kind of do all the things that other mediums do for traditional oil paint, um, you know, thinners, um, fast drying materials, oils, all those things. I haven't really dabbled in those. I'm not sure I feel the need to it because the need to do that because I have kind of both uh, regular oil paints and water soluble oil paints. Much like with watercolors, being in an art shop with all these options is very, very intimidating. And um, I try to watch videos and kind of figure out what the differences were between different brands. Obviously, some are higher quality and some are like student grade or lower quality. Then there's the whole water soluble part. So choosing which colors to buy can be, for me, one of the hardest things. And 
I kind of see myself, I'm trying to avoid the mistakes that I made in the beginning of my watercolor journey, but I feel like a lot of them I can't really avoid and especially since a lot of the shopping that I do for art supplies is done online, the colors are always a little bit of a gamble and while there are a gazillion million videos on swatching watercolors, which I am very grateful for, there are very very few uh, about swatching oil paints. Now I understand because oil paints take weeks to dry, so I guess nobody's really interested in doing these swatches, but that would have been so so helpful. It's so hard to see colors on the screen, especially when you have a very specific uh, color sense, uh, which is my situation. I don't like most of like the basic colors that artists recommend in their palettes. So it's been quite uh, a challenge for me to kind of focus and pick those colors and I've already made quite a few unnecessary purchases. I am just like accepting that because I know that as much as I try and as much as I check myself and look for swatches and look for images, I know that I need to find those specific colors that really bring me joy and um, fit my color sense and sometimes I miss because um, images online are not accurate and so I'm just like accepting that and I do my best to use the colors that I have but also for me using colors that I'm not excited about really um, kind of lowers the uh, enjoyment level of the process. So what I found very helpful even though it's still not cheap was the color palette or the color recommendations from two of my favorite current artists that paint with oils and one is Wendy Brightbill which I've been uh, a follower of hers for many many years. She's been a great inspiration for me. Uh, I love everything she does and her color sense is very very similar to mine and she has in her courses um, she paints with mixed media but she does a lot of oils especially in recent years which is a big part of why I decided to venture into that medium uh, because I feel with a lot of things she kind of shares my um, you know preferences not having like super complicated prepping mixing medium stuff like all that process. Uh, she doesn't like to paint that way and I don't like that either. I just want to enjoy the pretty colors and the process and I don't want to have to like do um, like labor intensive prep work. So I used her recommendations for colors and then I also used uh, Drima Toll Perry. Hopefully I'm pronouncing her name. She paints I think predominantly, not just in oils, because she also sketches in watercolors, but predominantly with oils. And her color choices are very, very close to my kind of perfect color story. And she uses quite a limited color palette. It's not, it's not like super limited, so it is still uh, a big investment if you want to like buy all the colors that she's using, especially if you want to buy all the like premium colors that she's using because she also offers uh, a more budget-friendly palette and a water-soluble palette, which I really appreciate. So she has that information on her website and in all her courses, and whether you want to learn from her or not, uh, you can use that palette to kind of guide you in your choices and I do feel like if I wanted to use uh, a limited color palette, which I don't always, uh, but if I wanted to use that then hers is very very close to what I would choose uh, to use on like a regular basis. Um, I can mix most of like my favorite colors using her recommendations, especially in certain areas of the color wheel and I'm particularly grateful to her for one discovery of most of the colors that she recommends I'm familiar with them in other mediums but there was one that I bought just because she specified it and I just adore that color and the mixtures that it makes are like the perfect coral 
reddish colors so that was a great discovery and I guess I should mention that um, that is the transparent red medium from Rembrandt that color is gorgeous so that kind of helped me I don't like the basic sets I've, I've tried to like find an introductory set because those tend to be a good deal I tried to look for something that would fit my needs but there was nothing really like nothing out there that appealed to me it's all like filled with like earth tones or kind of those what to me are like basic boring primary colors so I want the turquoises I want the violets I want the bright pinks I want the orangey yellows um, and yeah I didn't find those in any introductory sets so these two artists kind of helped me focus a little bit so with paints it's as overwhelming as it is with watercolors there are a few kind of go-to colors that I know that I love that was the kind of easier part for me um, in this transition to oil paints because I still have the same color sense and I still want to use those same colors uh, like I use in other mediums so uh, that didn't change that gave me a little bit of direction but still you know I'm still trying always to find those perfect colors and uh, that is a costly <laughs> costly experience so um, as for the quality till now I've tried several brands my absolute favorite is the Charvin paint from France they have the most gorgeous color range and again obviously you don't need to buy like a ton of colors but I really enjoy having a selection I also I don't mind so much mixing paint but and sometimes it does really help with the harmony of a painting and of course it can lower your costs if you're just working with a limited palette especially if you can find some good deals and you know buy large tubes all those things these things I find are more relevant when you have a clearer image of your preferences the formula that you like the colors that you like I'm not there yet uh, because this is a new to me medium so I'm not familiar with every brand's different qualities however with Charvin um, their colors are just super gorgeous and I've already found like a few that I you know never want to live without <laughs> but uh, what's even well I wouldn't say nicer than the colors but as important is the texture and what is wonderful about them is first of all they are perfect as they are straight from the tube uh, to work with a palette knife which is sadly <laughs> i'm saying sadly because of that drying time <laughs> um, my preferred method of applying pen paint now i am trying to use also a brush because it does have its advantages uh, especially for that like first layer I mostly paint in or everything I paint is in the alla prima uh, method which means you paint your painting in kind of one sitting which usually in my case lasts for you know a couple of days uh, I just need sometimes a little bit of time to process or I don't have enough time to finish a painting in a day so going back to the paint it is perfect as it is when it comes from the tube for palette knife painting it has the most creamy luscious consistency and hopefully I can insert some photos so you can see how it looks and also what is nice about it is it that it stays workable on my palette for several days without me having to use any kind of like stay wet palettes or having to cover my palette I'm not saying that is a big issue but I'm very messy and sometimes like those extra steps are just not something that I want to deal with and having a paint that I can put on my palette work on a painting or several paintings and not have to constantly clean out uh, like gummed up paint uh, that sort of thing uh, is really important to me so for that reason as well sharving has been great and then with other paints that I've tried it really depends on the paint and I think it also depends on the pigment and like the individual formulation of every paint so I'm sure is trying to figure out another one that is working really well for me is the white from Winton which is the student grade brand of oil paints from Windsor and Newton uh, they have their fancy uh, oil paint 
and I actually have tried that and some of the colors there are beautiful. I've only tried their transparent colors because that's those are the ones that uh, Dreamer recommends in her courses. Um, and they are nice as well. A few of the colors are really, really nice, like their um, permanent, permanent rose. That's a beautiful one. Their magenta is nice. And, and the sap green has a tone that I really like. I tried first a sap green from a cheaper brand, from Van Gogh, uh, from Royal Talons, and I didn't really like the tone of it. So the Windsor & Newton sap green, it's not so, you know, like that forest green. It has a little bit of earthiness to it, which is what I prefer. Um, I'll probably switch that uh, to olive green on my palette in the future, but yeah. Uh, so that's really, really important to me, to have paints that are workable for a few days on my palette, and Charvin does that. As for brushes, I haven't tried a ton. I bought the ones that Dreamer recommends, which are the Winsor & Newton Monarch brushes. I do enjoy those. Um, at, usually, at some point of the painting, I kind of, more at the uh, end stages, I kind of move into my palette knife, and I have a few, like I have a couple, but the one that I've been enjoying the most is the Liquitex Freestyle. It's not about the Liquitex one, it's about the shape of it. It's like this diamond shape palette. Uh, so this one is the Freestyle and it's number, small knife number 17. That's the one that I really like. I have another one that I got um, and it has this shape and I haven't uh, enjoyed using it uh, that much. It's it's okay for like covering larger areas, but for the work that I like to do, uh, this like diamond shape one has been kind of my go-to. With the uh, Monarch uh, brushes, they are really nice. They're nice to handle. And the way that Dreama uses them, she actually doesn't use solvents or cleaners to clean them as she's painting. She uses uh, paper towels, which I don't like the idea of because of the waste, but I like that idea better than using solvents on a regular basis, just because, I don't know, I'm a little bit hesitant. I have been using a little bit, um, kind of like what she suggests, but um, in general, I prefer to avoid using them, again, because I have messy, because I have kids, I have pets. I just prefer not to have those kind of materials in my space, but I do find them necessary for certain purposes. Yeah, now as for surfaces, I've tried several and I really like these gesso boards from Ampersand. Uh, again, that's what Dreamer recommends. And I tried also canvas boards, didn't really like those because of the texture. These are super smooth and they are thin. Uh, so I think they will be easier to frame than having those like thick wood panels, which I love working on, but I don't necessarily like the end result with those. Um, so you can see here, let me show you like this piece, sorry about the mess, but it's always messy here. Like this piece here, this is, it has like some collage. I was just playing around, having fun with this. And you can see the thick sides. I just struggle to keep those uh, really kind of clean and neat. So I think for me, probably um, the gesso boards are a better option. And what I also liked using uh, just because of the cost and the framing um, ease, are those like canvas paper type of surfaces made for oil paints. Uh, those are very inexpensive compared to all of these kind of, you know, boards or uh, cradled wood or canvases. And they're very, very easy to frame because they're just like so thin. You can just buy a regular frame. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need like a special service. You can just buy a frame from a place like Ikea and, um, and, frame your oil paintings. Um, so I bought actually a really nice wooden frame from Ikea and uh, we call it Ikea here <laughs> in Austria. <laughs> but for my American viewers, uh, I try to remember to say Ikea. If I forget, please, it's not intentional. It's just because we say Ikea here, uh, like the Swedish people who invented Ikea. So 
Uh, I bought a really nice wooden frame and then I removed, they don't have like glass um, frames, uh, it's like plastic. I removed it and then it's like an open frame which really allows oil paints to glow. So as for mediums, I did buy kind of the minimal, uh, like the minimum things that uh, Dreama recommended just to fit uh, like the first step in her process, you need uh, a couple of mediums. So I got those and I used them, but it's very, it's a very minimal use. And sometimes I don't even use that. I just use paint. So you can do that. You don't have to uh, have uh, special mediums or solvents. I would say probably at some point it makes certain things easier and it is essential with certain techniques, but it's but you can use very little of it or sometimes not at all. So I wanted to say that in case that was something you were very uh, hesitant about. And again, there's the option of the water soluble oils um, if you really want to like stay away from all those solvents. So paint, brushes, surface. I did get like a nice glass palette and I'm really happy that I did. I also have those like tear away palettes. Those are also good, but there's something very um, luxurious and nice about having a glass palette. And I found that I tend to use that with oil paints, just the whole process. First of all, it's larger than my tear away palette and it's just like nice to mix colors on top of the glass. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the drying time. That is definitely a big, big, big minus for me with oil paints. Yes, it's nice that you can rework areas of your paintings like within a few days. Uh, if you use paint like I use, you know, with straight from the tube with a brush or palette knife. Um, but it's still uh, quite... A hassle to have to find a place to put your painting for uh, weeks until they are dry to the touch and then maybe you can like I don't know shift a little bit there's like their storing situation I did purchase a really really nice drying rack that was quite expensive but I felt it would be a good investment for me it's also really nice because I paint a lot with my kids and well with my seven-year-old and you know sometimes we just go through a lot of paper or we paint with watercolors and you know how it is with kids they get everything gets like really wet and uh so i thought this drying rack i'm sorry i'm just like looking here because it's right here uh, i thought that would be nice so that was an investment but it's something that also looks nice it's like made of wood or the frame of it and it's not like an eyesore of like some plastic type of like a laundry hanging uh, contraption in my room. So now I wanna finish this with the um, experience of painting with oils. And what I heard over the years is that there is something about the paint that the, the colors are just like more intense than acrylics. It's just the way that the paintings look, they look more alive and they play with the light. Now, I definitely think some of it has to do with how you varnish your paintings and what kind of finish you add to them. And I think to a certain extent, you can also play around with those things with acrylic. I also paint with acrylics and I enjoy that process as well, but I can't deny that there's something about the, the like, how luscious and kind of glossy and beautiful oil paints are. And yeah, there's just something about it. And I agree that I've been trying to play also with kind of heavy body paint with palette knives, trying to play with that in acrylics and see if I can get a similar experience and result because I prefer to deal with acrylics over oils. Um, it's not easy, you know, it's not easy. Again, I think uh, you can kind of play around, especially with acrylics, uh, if you kind of varnish or use some sort of glaze over your paintings that is semi-glossy or glossy. So you can do that, but the paints are just, you know, with acrylics, you're, unless you're using a retarder or like open paint, 
you're kind of always in a race against the clock because they dry so fast and with oils you can really kind of take your time and you know mix the perfect shade and apply that one swipe of your brush or palette knife and there is something very relaxing and enjoyable in that process um to a certain extent i felt the same with watercolors but obviously with watercolors you know after like half an hour maximum everything is dry and with oils you don't you just have more time and the way that the colors kind of interact with each other it's difficult sometimes to control them especially if you use more of like impasto um, consistency and palette knife and all that stuff but there is something about it I can't deny that and I am really enjoying it so like for example this is a piece that I made on these like thick uh, cradled wood and I can already see the gloss I'll try not to drop it but I mean the colors the texture it's it's so so beautiful and it's just so enjoyable so yeah i'm a bit a bit in love and a bit <laughs> frustrated with that because it's again another medium that i have to kind of learn everything i can about but uh, I also seem to, you know, really enjoy that, like diving into a new medium or a new hobby, learning everything that I can, buying too many things. Um, and that's kind of where I am with oils. So this is a painting just trying to share where I'm learning, who I'm learning from. Uh, I'm, I think the first steps that I took um, very hesitantly into this world were with uh, Wendy Brightbill. And she has a very kind of non-traditional, non no-nonsense approach to oils. It's mostly just, you know, squeeze the paint out of the tube, grab a palette knife. Sometimes she also uses a bit brush, but I think it's mostly uh, palette knife work that she does. And then she also uses a lot of like mixed media. So she'll use a collage background or like cradled wood or do like layers in acrylics and other mediums before she kind of puts the finishing touches in oils uh, or sometimes she just paints with oils but uh, I learned kind of to do what she does and enjoyed it and then I really wanted when I saw the colors that Drima uses in her paintings I felt like I had to learn from her and see how she achieves um, her her kind of signature look which is also very loose which is of course what I enjoy I really don't like anything realistic or hyper realistic uh, I just love how she enhances the colors and has this like a very loose uh, playful way of painting and her whole like philosophy of painting is very much aligned with mine which is you know do what you love have a good time and uh, you know break the rules when you feel like you want to break them and just use the colors that you love to create art that you love. So uh, I signed up to her courses and she had a winter sale. Um, I don't know if I recommend, I mean, the courses are incredible. I, they're incredible, but they're very, very expensive. And I don't like spending so much money on courses. Uh, of course, compared to like an in-person workshop, I think it's a good price, but also compared to other classes that I've taken, especially with Wendy, because she is so generous with her courses. They are so, um, the pricing is really actually, she should raise her prices. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> and then she had um, recently quite a long sale of 40% off her courses, which even brought the, the prices down even more. So yeah, I'm not saying that, you know, I, I, I think she should charge more for her classes, but Shreema's classes are very, very expensive uh, in my book. I think they're worth it. I learned so much from her and it's just like pure joy. 
but she also has a subscription program. I'm not affiliated or anything, just a very, very excited, <laughs> enthusiastic student and customer. Um, so she has uh, this uh, subscription program, which is called Flow, which sadly, very, very sadly, I think I missed the winter um, enrollment session uh, just by like a month when I really, really found her and her artwork. Uh, so they say it will be open again for enrollment in the spring. I signed up to every list I could find and I follow her everywhere because I'm really excited to join that program. I think they have already like 60 tutorials there where she shows from start to finish how she paints beautiful scenes and flowers. Uh, I think she also paints like cats sometimes, which I'm not that into. For me, it's mostly florals. That's like my main thing. Uh, and she does a beautiful job doing that. So I'm hoping to join her subscription program. I don't know how much it costs, but you know, the good thing is you sign up, uh, you get access to all the uh, previous tutorials. So, you know, if you have a month that is a little bit less intensive in your life, you can really binge watch and get into that. And then if you have other months where you don't have the time, uh, you can, you know, like unsubscribe. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I will definitely, definitely be joining that and uh, binge watching all of those <laughs> tutorials from previous years. And then there's a new one in oil and a new one in watercolors every month. So she does really cute sketches with watercolors, but it's her oil paintings that really uh, amaze me. And she makes everything look incredibly easy. It kind of reminds me of the days when I studied watercolors from uh, Jean Haynes. Again, another brilliant artist that just makes everything look so effortless. It's years of training and you know, mastering those skills. And it's the same with Dreama. She just like, you know, mixes her paint and like applies the brush strokes and everything looks perfect and really easy. It's not, it's really not. It's very challenging actually to get the consistencies right and the colors right and those brush strokes right and not to create a mess. Um, but it's very, very fun and she's very kind of positive and easygoing. And I just respond to teachers and artists that, you know, show you what they do, but also encourage you to do your own thing. And uh, she's one of those, so, but I really like <laughs> much of what she does. <laughs> so that's kind of been my experience. If you have any more questions, um, you know, please leave them below. As I said, this is just like a beginner's perspective. I've painted, uh, I'll show you one of my favorites. So this is from her course. I can't show the process or any of that. You know, I can't sell these paintings because these are based on her like step-by-step -step specific instructions, but this was a joy to make and, um, you know, I can frame it and hang it in my home so I can enjoy it. And then another one that I did in her course is this one. She starts with these really small pieces and um, you can paint ice cream. So just look at the texture. I mean, how gorgeous is that? It looks like you can eat this. So this I painted in December and this is dry to the touch. From experience, if you apply too much pressure, then those thick areas can still move around because the oil paint does its thing. And they say it takes, I think, around six months to be completely, completely dry. So they're living uh, in my fancy drying rack. And this I could probably, I guess I could uh, frame this and hang this and then in six months apply a layer of varnish from my understanding. I'll show you another piece that I made. Uh, this was just using one of the pictures that she supplies uh, in her workshops. So I think this one is just with a brush. So I didn't use a palette knife, which is very hard for me. Um, yeah, it's there's a lot to learn here. I've tried a few brushes briefly. Mostly I've been painting with the Monarch brushes and I'm not sure 
how I feel about them. So this was also like really fun to make. This was, I think, the first one that I did before I could find those gesso boards. I just found like these canvas boards in my uh, local shop. So again, like ice cream. Um, at some point, I think I switched to a palette knife just because I was getting frustrated with the brush uh, strokes. But I mean, look at that. It's just so luscious and I've been playing around also with uh, kind of thick acrylics, playing with modeling paste. It doesn't look like this. It doesn't feel like this. It's just not as enjoyable to work with. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, everyone feels the way that I do, but that has been my somewhat limited, but still uh, that's been my experience. Right now, I mostly really really drawn to painting like florals i guess that's what i'll try to do more of uh, again working on that canvas paper type of thing i didn't really like it as i was painting on it also you know you have to like either glue it to something or um, work you can't put it like on an easel you have to work on a table uh, which i don't mind so much um but it's not as enjoyable, but the ease of framing it and the price is very, very tempting to me. I think when you are kind of tackling a new medium, there's something to be said about learning kind of the basics and the options that you have and kind of the different techniques. So it is essential like having that knowledge, but if you find those artists that kind of use the colors that you love and create a look that you love, then, you know, learn from them and don't worry so much about like knowing everything there is to know about it. I get that. I have kind of that approach that I feel like I need to learn as much as I can about something and kind of know everything that it can do and I do have a good resource for that that I think is also very very fairly priced so I'll leave that below um, this artist also has tons of videos on YouTube so some of that information is available of course for free again what is kind of annoying to me when I want to learn something is that if you go to Google or if you go to YouTube you have to kind of sift through um, endless amounts of videos. I think uh, this particular artist is a good option for learning kind of the, the basics of this medium, but I don't really have um, a desire to paint like he paints. And also the course that I took, I think it was last year, I was gifted uh, kind of the beginning classes in um, this online school for oil painting that is very very like methodical like you know squeeze out two centimeters of paint mix them with four drops of oil and so on and so forth which some people enjoy learning that way it's definitely um kind of uh you feel secure you feel like you have guidance and there's kind of very little room for um, error or exploring because they tell you exactly what to do, exactly what to paint, exactly how to paint it, exactly what colors to use and all that. So that might be something that works for you. For me, it was uh, kind of, it felt like a safe way to start exploring the medium, but I have limited time and I don't want to spend it doing things I don't enjoy or things that I feel like don't necessarily give me the skills to do things the way that I want to do them. So um, I will list that one also below and I think for some people that would be a great place to study. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be back with more watercolor videos. My plan for the next weeks and months is actually to create a series that kind of follows along my watercolor book. If you haven't seen it, um, I highly recommend checking it out. It's a really, really fun book if you want to explore watercolors 
in a free and intuitive way, then I recommend picking up my book. I don't know, I'm still kind of trying to get back into routine after the holidays. I got questions if I'm going to continue on Patreon and um, I really enjoyed the three months that I did on Patreon and it was very motivating for me to kind of create and paint regularly and make those videos but it's also very very labor intensive so I'm not sure. I definitely want to make more courses and mostly I just want to paint. I want to paint and kind of share my process and share my, um, you know, painting philosophy and products that I enjoy because I really try to help people with their purchases on my channel just because I feel like I struggled so much with that myself and I spend so much money on things that I wish I hadn't. Uh, of course that's part of my job to try things and review them here on YouTube but I also don't want to you know buy things that I don't like and enjoy and sometimes you know when I find those perfect colors, those perfect formulas, that perfect brush, uh, I'm super happy to share that with others because yeah, sometimes you won't find these things. There's so many things out there. How are you going to know which ones you should try and which ones are great? So um, I hope to do that with you. For me, with oils, the Charvin paints and kind of combined with Dreama's color work and color mixes. She has like some color mixes that are just really beautiful. And those have really brought me joy when it comes to painting with oils. Um, I'm still undecided about how much I want to use um, colors that I mixed and how much I enjoy using just like beautiful colors that are formulated exactly to, you know, my taste uh, straight from the tube. There's something about that I don't... I just enjoy playing with color and putting it on a canvas or a board or whatever. I don't necessarily enjoy like spending so much time mixing those perfect shades and it really um, kind of saddens me when I create a mixture especially if it uses like larger amounts of paint of a color that I'm just not excited about and then I have to kind of waste it because I don't want to use it on my paintings that has been uh, a lesson that I, it took me forever to learn if I'm not excited about a color don't use it just because I'm lazy or, you know, I don't want to throw it away, not use it. Um, but yeah, so still exploring that. And if you want to know more, if you want to know about like my superstar colors, then uh, leave me a comment below and I'll be happy to do a video about that. I'm all about the color, you know that. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, so I hope to share more of my adventures and probably a lot of just like painting videos because that's what I want to do. I want to spend my days painting. <laughs> that's the best thing ever. Making art. Is there anything better? I don't know. Maybe traveling. Yeah, probably that. When I'm home making art and then traveling. Uh, so I wish you all a wonderful new year. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being here. There's still watercolors, they're still in my world, but yeah, right now I'm a little bit obsessed with oils and um, I don't know if you're like that, if you really uh, enjoy exploring new ideas, new mediums, new hobbies, um, I am. And sometimes that brings me to buying too much yarn and then having a ton of yarn <laughs> or tons of oil paint, but it is what it is. So again, thanks for watching. Sorry about the rambling. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.